Welcome to the end of the month list, my favourite list of the month. We talk about my top five albums from a particular month, and April's coming to a close, so I'm here to show you my favourite albums I've been blasting this month. Now, this is probably going to be the last video I do for a little bit, because uh, I'm in the process of moving, so maybe the next video you'll see will have a different background, who knows? You know, who knows? We'll, we'll soon find out. But yeah, the content's going to be sparse for a little bit, especially during May, or at least the first half of May anyway. But, that out of the way, let's get in with the actual good stuff, the reason why you're here, and let's talk about the albums from this month that I really enjoyed. So, again, like all my other videos like this, pop down below your favourite albums, the ones you've been blasting this month. So I can read them because it's fun to explore new bands, you know, ones I've missed and maybe I'll find something new to love that might be on my end of the year list. So pop down in the comments below and let's get started with my number five, which is a band I've mentioned in previous years, and that is Ignea, which is this progressive metal band mixing in some symphonic flares, but it's mainly progressive metal, so let's give it a whirl. So the album in question is Dreams of Lands Unseen. Now, I really loved the previous album. I thought it was fantastic. You know, mixing in the heaviness with the beautiful singing, and this album is no exception. It does it just as good. You know, sometimes even better on this one, I love. Love the catchy choruses, love the singing. The keyboards in this are fantastic as well. Love that mix, love that harmony between the harshness and the beauty, because it has the growls in as well as the beautiful singing, so it really reminds me of like Epica, probably one of my favourite um, progressive metal bands of that nature. And Ignea is really underrated, so go give this a listen, go give it some more love, because this album is fantastic and definitely worth your time, so yeah, go pick it up. Next up, we're going to go with some Grave Worm, Killing Innocence. Grave Worm, a band I haven't really talked about on the channel, but we will do a ranking in time, and they're so good at just making these crunchy, chunky riffs, like, my god, the riffs on this album, killer, the growls, so satisfying, so low, just mouth-watering, this whole album is thick with atmosphere, thick with sound, love the heaviness on this album, and they're just a band that's just very consistent, you know, most of the discography is very good, um, so it's going to be interesting to rank them, but this album definitely will go high on the list. This album only came out, like, just recently, so I do need more time with it, but on first couple of listens, it blew my socks off, love it, and I'm going to continue to headbang it all year. So yeah, Grave Worm, fantastic stuff. Next up is Fires in the Distance with Idiopathic Despair. Now this is another band I've mentioned before, the previous album with the amazing art, like they're so good at doing art, and this is the same style as the first album, and I love that they're continuing this same trend, um, but yeah, I've talked about the previous album when it came out, and it blew my socks off, you know, for a newer band like this to release something so good, and they followed it up with something even bloody better, what? This is for fans of Bellacore, this is for fans of Insomnium, that kind of... Uh, moody, progressive, uh, death metal, like mellow death kind of stuff. It's so good. They do it so well. The growls on here, amazing. The beautiful parts, the beautiful segments of the songs perfectly complements the harsh heaviness 
and it just, oh, it works so well. Like, this might even go higher, but it came out again, like Grave Worm, quite recently, you know, like the last two days, and I need a lot more time with it. So it's only coming here for the moment, but you know, the end of the year list, I'm going to listen to it a lot more, so it might rise higher. Really enjoy it, need a lot more time with this album. So it's going to come here at number three at the moment, but just know it's so good, I think it will rise. It'll rise, I know it will. So coming in at number two, we have Metallica. Metallica really rocks, really rocks. With 72 seasons. Say what you will, um, there's a lot of people either on the, oh, it's boring, I don't like this release, to the opposite side of the spectrum where it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. I'm not that naive. I don't think it's as good as, you know, Master of Puppets or Ride the Lightning, but <laughs> I've been playing this a hell of a lot. I gave it quite a high score, like a 7 out of 10 or 8 out of 10. And yeah, I pretty much like every single song on this album, aside from probably one, and yeah, that's it. I've been blasting this constantly. Revitalized my love for Metallica. I'm going to be seeing them in a month. I I love the catchiness of a lot of these songs. Uh, Room of Mirrors is fantastic. Inamorata is an amazing, epic way to close the album. That's one of my favorite Metallica songs I've done in recent memory. Lux Eternal is a great thrasher. Screaming Suicide is fantastic as well. And yeah, Shadows Follow is one of my favorite songs of the year. So, yeah, the fact I've been playing it constantly since it came out shows you that it's good. I don't care what anyone else says. It's on my list. It's coming here at number two. So, it only leaves one number one, and if you know me, you already know what this is going to be. Let's talk about Bell Witch's Clandestine Gate. Yes! Funeral Doom! I loved Mirror Reaper when it came out. I love Full Phantoms as well. Um, I, I love all their albums pretty much, and this one is no exception. Like an hour and a half long song. It's an hour and a half long song. And it's Funeral Doom, so it has about half an hour build up. It then hits with the growls, amazing thunderous growls in the mid part. It slows down again at the end. It's just a nice atmospheric beautiful piece of music that is so good at night time. You know, darkness, blast on some clandestine gate. It's perfect. Gets you right in the mood uh, and it's relaxing as hell and I love those kind of musics. This is the year of Funeral Doom, I think. You know, I reckon by the end of the year list my top two might be Funeral Doom. <laughs> we'll, we'll see when it gets to that, but yeah, I'm loving this album uh, since it came out. I know some people weren't big into it because they don't think it was as hooky as Mirror Reaper, but come on, Mirror Reaper had a loads of long, slow parts as well. It's Funeral Doom, what'd you expect? I think this stands up with it. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I'm going to continue to re-listen to it, and re-listen to it, because it's my kind of music, you know? It's my kind of music, it's relaxing. It's not for everyone, obviously, an hour and a half song of Funeral Doom is probably not going to tickle a lot of people's balls, but it tickles mine, and I love it for that. So those are my top five albums of this month. What did I miss off? There's a lot of albums. You know, Overkill's one was good. Power Wolf's one was good. There's so many. A Dodd's Times Guard was pretty good as well. I know loads of people love that one a lot. I prefer the ones I've got on my list. But yeah, so many good albums this month. And let me know ones I've missed off down below. Pop your own down below. And we'll see you again, maybe, in another humble abode. See you again on another Quest for Metal.